What's good? Welcome to Ari Roars. This is Ari speaking. Thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to be talking all about how to heal from a heartbreak in six months or less. Now I know that's a that's a major a major kind of claim to make that I can tell you how you can heal your heart within six months, but I. I still firmly believe in what I'm about to tell you that I can confidently say it will work. Unless, now there's one thing that I don't know nothing about is divorce. I ain't even been married, so I can't tell you about divorce. But I will say that even someone who's been divorced can heal their heart emotionally when it comes to the marriage in a lot of ways. With this word, there's going to be more uh, intricacies with marriage than I've ever experienced. So just keep that in mind. But the reason that I felt inclined to share this is because I've experienced heartbreak a solid four, four strong times, you know what I mean? Um, and the first time it took me years to recover from it. I mean, I just recently, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it wasn't that it was, it hurt me that deeply. It was because I suppressed a lot of what I needed to heal. And that actually led me to more heartbreaks along the way. And ultimately they all just stack up on top of each other. So my last time having my heart broken was the most, it's not that it was the most devastating, it was just that I had the strongest emotions for this person than I ever had for anyone before. And yet I healed from it faster than any of the others. And in healing from that, I also healed from the other um, heartbreaks. And so the difference is not, you know, when it happened or who it was or anything like that. The difference is the tools that I used and the strategy that I chose in healing. And Jesus, thank you, the Lord, he gave me this process. Unknowingly, I had, you know, this healing process that I was going through. But basically through the experience that I had during that time, I finally realized what I did wrong in the past and what was stopping me from healing um, in past relationships and past situations and that now allowed me to have a breakthrough in my healing from heartbreak and in new relationships. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into it and I wanna start off by giving you a little bit of a story about the first time that my heart was broken and what I did in response to that. Well, first of all, I was majorly in denial about the fact that my heart was broken. Like, I'm like, I did not love him. I barely even knew him very well. And the thing about it is, I, it's kind of true. Like, I, maybe there was some love there. I, I really find it kind of hard to conceptualize it at this point. But I do know that I had a lot of feelings for this person at the time. And we were never in a relationship. And... We basically had a falling out and he ended up in another relationship like very soon after i mean like dangerously soon after so um it was really hurtful that i had to see him in a relationship and so i kind of i self-medicated with other people and drugs and i actually spiraled I, that's the best way that i can describe it is like my life literally took a turn and when i look back at all the things that i experienced in my life um, and how I was going about life, it didn't change until I was heartbroken by that one person that one time. And the fact that my response was not to heal properly or not to acknowledge what I felt, but I decided to cover it up and bury it under, you know, numbing practices, that led me to some severe mental health issues, having sex with the person who was not right in the mind, who was not on the right path and I mean, I literally was a virgin. I, I'm telling you this just so that you can have like the concept in your mind of what actually happened to me is that I was a virgin, denied having sex with this person um, that I actually had feelings for. But when they broke my heart, I felt like I had to go get under somebody else. And I lost my virginity. And the person that I had sex with was not, he was totally me settling and me looking at the situation through a clouded lens because I was so heartbroken that I was kind of willing to have anyone validate the fact that I was worthy. You know, I felt very rejected. So it was kind of like, well, this person didn't reject me. This person was really easy to get, you know what I mean? So um, it was kind of like me trying to validate myself in that situation, all the while I'm also smoking a lot of weed. 
I mean, I became like a major, major pothead um, after that happened. <laughs> and I mean, it was bad to the point like I was like smoking right before class. I smoked one time before I uh, had a final presentation. Presentation, I was literally standing in front of the class presenting and I was high. It's crazy, I, I've done worse too, I will admit. But the other thing about that was I then continued finding worse and worse relationships and coming up with this idea in my head that all guys ain't shit basically because it was like okay you're treating me just like he did you're treating me just like he and he did you're treating me just like all three of them did it was like I had this narrative in my mind niggas ain't shit yeah so after that I did have my heart broken two more times because I ended up falling in love with two more people who were not really good for me for different reasons um but the last time that I fell in love was it was I did actually try to take some time to heal. I did because I <laughs> it's kind of weird how it happened, but two of my heart heartbreaks were like just a couple months apart. I'm talking like three or four months apart. But the relationships were overlapped because it was kind of like on and off, very toxic types of situations. And they both came to an end in the same year. And I was finally like, okay, I'm gonna try and heal from this. I'm just gonna try and feel, you know, just cry, cry it out, whatever. But I wasn't only doing that, I was also drinking a lot, smoking, you know, I was doing uh, psychedelics now. I started doing shrooms, I started doing acid once, but still, once is enough to claim you've done it right. <laughs> I wouldn't um, encourage anyone to do these things, but I'm just being transparent about my journey and like the fact that me actually being heartbroken is what led me to make these types of decisions. But at one point, at some point, I finally processed a lot of my heartbreak and stopped doing, I still dabbled with drinking, smoking, but I stopped doing it like as a numbing type of process and I just became a little healthier. And then that was when I met the other person who broke my heart again. But that wasn't like as toxic of a situation. Um, and Jesus helped me heal from that. And in healing from that, I actually healed from the other relationships as well. And what I will say is that had I been aware that all of my heartbreaks were intertwined, had I been aware that I was still heartbroken by past situations, I would have recovered from the most recent heartbreak faster and I would have healed from all of them faster. Six months is like, as I can say, I didn't heal from it in six months, but it's because I had resistance. I didn't have all of the tools. Jesus Christ, there is a some kind of beetle in my in my home. I would have healed from it faster if I actually acknowledged my feelings and took the time to acknowledge my feelings about past people. Because when you heal from a past relationship, you see everything more clearly. I started to look back at older situations and like what happened then, what is still sticking out to me emotionally, whether positive or negative, what's still sticking out to me about that situation. And when I begin to see it more clearly, process those emotions, heal from it, then now I come back and I look at the more recent heartbreak and I see that 10 times more clearly because I don't have the fog of the past. So I just wanna break down into a couple of points exactly what I'm saying needs to happen when you are trying to heal from a heartbreak effectively, efficiently, strategically, quickly, swiftly. First of all, stop numbing. So. Drinking, smoking, having sex, dating new people, trying to get into a new relationship. All of those things are numbing processes. I don't want to feel what I'm going through. I don't want to continue experiencing negative emotions. I don't want to acknowledge the fact that this hurt me, so I'm going to bury it under substances and people. That's basically what's happening. And everyone wants to encourage that these days. Get over someone by getting under somebody else or you know, get you a rebound. Um, that's not healing, that's distracting yourself from what you're feeling long enough that you have in, enough experiences to forget that it happened, but forgetting doesn't heal. So 
don't numb yourself try to be sober that's a really hard thing to do but it's if you want to heal as fast as possible if you want to get over it like over it like climb and conquer it until the point that you're a better person than you were when you were in the relationship or before the relationship try to be sober try just a suggestion just putting it out there try not to have sex at least while you're healing from because that's another thing is that so sex is not only physical we all know this right because you start thinking about them the next day it's kind of like or you feel better the next day, or you feel worse the next day. Whatever the case may be, it's because you're connected with that person now. Physically, you're connected with that person. Mentally, you're connected with that person spiritually. And spiritually, that's the major part that... That's the major part that people don't really want to acknowledge, is that it is a spiritual experience. That's why sex feels so good, because it's touching every part of you. Your soul, your body, and your spirit. And so all of the spirits that have afflicted this person or that uh, are, have been oppressing this person. And I'm gonna pause right here because I know that there's some people who are thinking spirituality, but they don't wanna ever acknowledge that spirits exist. You have to, if, what is spirituality? What, remove that uality part. What is a spirit? Spirits are real. <laughs> And, and if you don't acknowledge that spirits are real and you think that talking about spirits is too spiritual, you just don't want to learn enough about yourself. You have a spirit, you know? So spirits try to affect us. Good ones, bad ones. There are spirits of anxiety, fear, depression, I just say all that to say, be very cautious of who you're having sex with. If you're in a mental fog because you are healing from a heartbreak, be mindful of the fact that you're going to be putting that on another person as well. That's not respectful of the other person. You might say, well, I know this person. I know this person has a healthy spirit. I know this person um, is in a healthy mind state and all these things. I know this person don't have no STDs, whatever the case may be. Um, that's not reason enough because now you could just be affecting that person with your heartbreak so just be respectful be thoughtful and considerate don't be selfish and that's another tendency that we seem to have when we are um when we're in pain is that we tend to be selfish hurt people hurt people that's what they say right so just try to be a little bit more considerate and not have sex with people and don't date someone new don't just try to like hop into a new relationship because you're never going to find the level level of depth that you deserve in a relationship when you're still walled up by the past relationship when you're still holding on to emotions from the last person you tend to have very shallow relationships when you decide to get into something new while you're still holding on to something old and by holding on i mean you're still hurt by it you still have emotions attached to the last person or the last situation and this is also when you're like breaking up and making up with your ex if they did something and y'all broke up and you're in your feelings about it and now you're sad and you miss them and it's a week later but what happened last week you didn't really heal from it yet and you just get back in the relationship because you miss them and you feel lonely now you're just piling on this makeup breakup dynamic and you're building up all of this pain that has not been addressed so if even if you want to get back with the person take more time to actually forgive them in your heart i'll get more into that but for now yes yeah, stop numbing by dating new people trying to fill in those holes of the things that didn't hurt you in the last relationship like getting flowers going on dates um getting good morning good night texts and all those things that you know you're used to and that benefited you but now you don't have them anymore because the other person hurt you so you want to go find someone else to do those things but you don't really care about having any emotional depth because you're still your heart is still taken you get what i'm saying here that's a numbing process and that leads me into the next point loneliness you're just gonna have to start addressing your loneliness and this is really 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 important i mean this is like this is something that you will need to do even if you're not heartbroken which is like okay 
I, I don't have any problems with anyone, but I don't like being alone. Like, I really wish that I had someone to just talk to or hold me, keep me warm at night, you know, those kinds of things. And, well, the loneliness is only going to be resolved in you because if you're looking for someone else to fill a hole in you, you're never going to find that healthily. You're going to find it in codependency, but you wouldn't find that in a healthy manner. So you're going to need to really find out what is it that I owe to myself to be a good companion to myself? Do I need to be taking better care of myself? Do I need to um, figure out my purpose and calling? Do I need to figure out what I'm passionate about? Do I need to start doing some hobbies? Maybe I need to take better care of my home and clean more. You know, you have this empty time and during that empty time you feel lonely. I used to feel very lonely and I ended up expressing myself creatively through music and things like that and that really helped fill in the gaps. Um, so it is important for you to find something that you love doing and that thing can be your companion rather than it being a person. And you're able to fulfill that need and desire for companionship within yourself by doing something that is your companion. And lastly, feel the emotions. I mean, really feel the emotions. Like you can say like, nah, that pissed me off and just dismiss it. But what I'm saying is I want you to really dig in there and like, I got mad because he said this and he did that, but he knows good and well that I was da -da 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 -da, like really go off in private. <laughs> don't tell him, don't call him, don't text him or her or them. Don't hit that person up. Just let it out of you. You know what I mean? Um, journaling can work. I was using music to do that. It's a tremendous release. You can go to therapy. And there's this aspect of pride and shame where you don't even really want to acknowledge the emotions that are hidden because that would mean that you have to acknowledge that you messed up. I actually did something wrong. I actually could have done something a little bit differently. I'm actually responsible for this argument coming up. I actually cheated back. So is he really that wrong when we both did the same thing? Or, you know, whatever the case may be, um, that, that leads to pride where you didn't really want to acknowledge your faults and feel the pain of knowing that you had a hand in why this happened. Feel the embarrassment, you know, or shame of the fact that, let's say you caught feelings for a player, but why are you having feelings for a player? Everybody knows <laughs> what type of guy this is or um, somebody dumped you and they didn't even give you a reason why and now you feel like you're just not good enough because you felt like you were a great partner and it's really embarrassing to even acknowledge the fact that this person you know left you and you did the best that you can because now you feel like your best is never going to be enough or i mean the list goes on but really it's just a matter of are you ashamed of how you feel is there something that you feel but you don't think you should feel it. So you're just going to pretend or you something that you feel, but you don't want to acknowledge the fact that you feel it because it just hurts. So you're going to ignore it. Really dig down into those emotions. Cry as much as you possibly can. I mean, just shed all those tears. And, and when you run out of things to cry for, come back tomorrow and try it again. And, and really break through. I mean, like you've really got to dig deep sometimes really rake through all of the details of what happened and be really sensitive to yourself, taking deep breaths and feeling what hurts when I think about it. What triggers me when I think about it? What do I want to get in an argument with them in my head about every time it comes to my mind? You know what I mean? This is a thing that I do a lot. I know I can't be the only one who does this, but I'm like, I'm remembering something that happened and I'm like, ooh, I wish I could tell him this and this and that. I should have said that. Like, if you have those moments in your head about something, you need to let those emotions out right there in that area and hopefully cry about it. Because sometimes we'll be angry and we'll think that it's just straight anger, but anger is usually the kind of prideful emotion burying down another emotion. Sometimes it really is just anger, but a lot of the times it is that we had an expectation for someone that they didn't meet and that makes us sad, but we we express it through anger. 
And another part of digging deep is, again, sometimes it's a past relationship. Maybe uh, you've dug as deeply into this relationship as you can without tapping into a past heartbreak that you still haven't healed from. Looking back to another situation and you start to see patterns in yourself and patterns in your experience that are bringing a revelation about what happened in this new or newer heartbreak. It could even be something as far as your childhood with, you know, childhood abuse or um, just manipulation or lies that you became, you came to believe when you were a child that are now resurfacing in this relationship, but you never really addressed it back then because you didn't really realize since you were a child, you know, that this was a problem or that this is not how things are supposed to go. And my last critical point I wanted to bring back is forgiveness 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 ooh forgiveness that word man such a beautiful word but the thing about forgiveness is even if you want to do it sometimes you don't want to do it and most of the time you don't want to do it <laughs> you know what i'm saying if you if you being really real like you don't want to let these people off the hook for what they did you know it's easier to just be like you hurt me you did this, you're wrong. You're a bad person. I don't like you. Kiss my ass. But that's never leaving room for healing. That's never leaving room for your own freedom. Because we try to chain these people to what they did. But meanwhile, these people could be on the other end like, dang, I shouldn't do that. I messed up. I forgive myself for what I've done. And I'll never do it again because I've learned from this and I forgive them for it. The other person could be totally free because they decided to forgive themselves and learn from it. But you could be, on the other hand, harboring all of these emotions and um, holding a grudge on this person and holding that pain in your heart because you think that they don't deserve freedom. And the whole time they learn their lesson and you are the only one still hurting from the situation because you refuse to forgive. And so... Forgiveness is good for your heart. It does nothing for them. It changes nothing between y'all, except for the fact that you can have peace whether they're there or not. So that's why forgiveness is so important. And really what I was trying to get into when I was giving the example of the other person is that forgiveness goes both ways. You need to forgive them for what they've done through empathy and understanding how you know they could have made a mistake how they might not have had the right tools to make the right decisions and that they can still learn from it and they are not their mistakes you know they are more than their mistakes and then for you also acknowledging where you messed up what you could have done differently sometimes it's not always that you know sometimes it's not always that you've done something wrong but you can forgive yourself for just not knowing yet because you know for me there was a lot of how could i be so stupid why would i think that that but it's you're naive like you can't know something until you know it so don't blame yourself or be angry at yourself for ignorance when now you have an opportunity to be wise we all have to grow at some point you can't just be born pop out the coochie just like insanely brilliant we all got to learn at some point point. and until you have forgiveness you will never be free from the relationship or the situation. You will never fully heal from it. So this is like the last key. Like this is like the key point is that you have to forgive. And that's going to bring you a lot of release and relief and just peace in your heart to where, you know, if you were to run into this person at the grocery store, you wouldn't feel anything strong. It would just be like, oh, hi, you know, like a positive content situation there would not be like a i'm so happy to see you i missed you so much try to kiss him <laughs> it wouldn't be nothing like that it also wouldn't be like mm, i don't want to look at you like it wouldn't be nothing rude you wouldn't have your heart racing and be freaking out it wouldn't be anything like that it would be a peaceful exchange you wouldn't be thinking about what happened in the past when you see this person you would only be thinking about this moment that's a good way to know from either your your imagination, like how would I respond if I saw this person, but also if it actually did happen. Like if you actually ran into this person, you didn't feel anything, you didn't like dwell on it after it happened, um, you can rest assured that you probably pretty much healed from the situation, if not fully completely healed from the situation. Outside of that, one really effective way to know that you've healed, and I've kind of mentioned that just now, but it's they don't remind you of the past. 
the new person does not remind you of that last relationship. Being back with that same person doesn't remind you of what happened with them in the past. If you come across a similar situation, you're never going to be like, oh my gosh, you're just like him. Oh my gosh, this is happening again, just like it happened the last time we were together. You're not thinking about, oh, my ex used to buy me flowers every week. You're not thinking about anything like that. You're not comparing them to the past version of them. You're not comparing them to the past person or another relationship. You're not holding them to a standard, whether high or low, that is directly connected to a past experience. Um, if the person reminds you of a past relationship during which you were hurt and heartbreak, heartbroken, <laughs> heartbreaked. <laughs> but if the person um, reminds you at all of that, then that means that you're still holding on to that. So you've got to, in that specific area where you had the reminder, you need to go back into that last relationship and find a way to release it, even if it just means that it was a good thing in your last relationship. Like he was so attentive, he was so, or you know, like she was so sweet and always sent me encouraging messages. Or you know, this person was very consistent, always talked to me the same time every day. Whatever the case may be, um, acknowledge that, that you really, really loved that in that past person and also acknowledge the current situation. We broke up, we're not together anymore. This person was like this and I'm not with this person anymore. And really address the emotion that comes up when you bring those two kind of conflicting ideas together. Can I be content with this? You know, so if you are trying to move on into a new relationship, but you're noticing that things are coming up about a past relationship, the best best thing to do would be to just you know try to take some time away from that relationship and fully heal but if you make the decision to stay and consist uh, consistently be with that person or grow in that relationship then make sure that you're doing the work make sure that you're really really doing the work and digging down into those old relationships and resolving the emotional um, attachment that you still have to it so that you can be free from it. Well, there's a couple sentences that I wrote down <laughs> and I don't really know how to like weave them into the, um, I don't know how to weave them into the message that I'm speaking, but I also want to blatantly say them just as like little quotes because I felt like they were like nice. <laughs> the first one is reminders don't mean you're repeating the past. They mean you're holding on to the past. Okay. And the second one is if you have let go from the past, that means you've gained wisdom and won't naively repeat past mistakes. I think that with that one, I was really trying to get across the point that um, you don't have to worry about making the same mistake because you've forgiven someone. You don't have to worry about the same thing happening again if you let go of it. Letting go of it means that you gained something from it. Letting go of it means that you only took what was good and what is worth keeping because you don't necessarily have to keep that in your mind anymore. You've already taken into your heart the things that mattered. And so you won't be naive enough to make the same mistakes. You never have to worry about going through the same thing again because you have gained wisdom and healed from it. So that was my strategy on how I healed from heartbreak and how you can heal from heartbreak in six months or less. That's it, that's all I got for you. If you liked it, then like it. Thanks for watching. Love you, bye.